Hi, I'm Jared and I'm on the product team at Field Pulse. And today I'm gonna to give you a brief demonstration of the Field Pulse app. The first thing you and your colleagues will see when logging into the Field Pulse app is the Field Pulse dashboard. From here, you can see how many jobs you have throughout the day, easily create customers, jobs, estimates, and invoices, and view any recent customers and jobs for easy access. The first thing you might notice when logging into the app are any unread notifications. I can see here that I have nine or more notifications. So I'll tap on my icon, notifications and reminders. And immediately you can see I'm a little bit behind schedule and I have 50 unread notifications. These could be from invoices, customer communications, notes from my colleagues, really anything that moves around in Field Pulse will notify you. Another nifty feature we have are notes. Notes could just be any notes you have for yourselves to create reminders, notes between you and your manager, or notes that are shared and read across the entire company. From here, you can also click on Help, which takes you to the Field Pulse Help Center. From our Help Center, you can see videos, webinars, demos just like this one to really help you get the most value out of Field Pulse. Lastly, you can click Open Engage. And if you are using the Engage product, this will send SMS communications to your customers, chats with your customers, and even voice calls with your customers. If you don't have Engage, that's okay. You can still send emails and automated SMS messages to your customers. Engage is more so on the voice calling side of things. From here, let's walk through each of the sections within the Field Pulse app. First, let's check out the schedule. There are four main schedule views. We have the list view, the calendar view, dispatch, and the map view. At the top, you can view just your schedule or the team schedule. In this example, I'm looking at my schedule, and these are all of the jobs that I have on Tuesday the 17th. If I want to do the calendar view, this will help view the schedule. Let's say I click here and I want to do the whole team. It'll show me the calendar day for today or maybe the calendar day for the week. And I can even do the month. This is more of a holistic view of what's going on in your team. Or maybe you have someone call in and you want to go to the dispatch view instead and they need service today. OK, let me find out who could help out today. Looks like we we're pretty booked up, but I noticed a lot of openings after 4 p.m. Lastly, we have the map view. One of the cool things about the map view is not only does it show you where all the jobs are in your region for that day, it shows you the status and the invoice status as well. So the first status is the job status. In this example, it looks like this one, the status is new. It's an AC install in Dallas, and here's the person assigned to it. And I can see that around the entire area. One of the other things you can do on the map view is actually see the last known location of your colleagues or the vehicles. In this instance, I can see one of the F-150s that we've been tracking using field pulse integration with fleet tracking was over here east of the city. You can also do that for each of your employees' locations as well if they're using the field pulse mobile app. Next, let's go to the work tab. The work tab is really any body of work. So we have projects, jobs, subtasks, and maintenance agreements. Projects are usually a collection of jobs. Think of projects as longer term, larger scopes of work. This might be multiple weeks, or it could be a month or even up to a year. Jobs are more so isolated bodies of work. A job could be recurring, or maybe it's a one-off instance of you going out and servicing someone, maybe putting in a new water heater. It could be the only time you ever service that customer. Subtasks are a great way to keep track of just any task for your employees, but you can associate these with jobs. So you could say, I need to do steps one, two, three, and four before moving this job to completed. And I want to require that for each of my technicians. More on this in just a minute. Lastly, we have maintenance agreements. These are pretty straightforward. Maintenance agreements are similar to jobs, but it really has a contract in place with the customer where maybe you install that water heater and you want to service it for free if they're one of your premium customers and perhaps you charge them a premium cost for this, but in the long run, it saves them money. That's a maintenance agreement. Next, let's talk about customers. Customers are at the center of everything in Field Pulse. Projects, jobs, estimates, invoices, payments, each one of them are associated with one customer or multiple contacts at a given customer. Field Pulse will automatically categorize customers for you. You and your technicians can filter by customers assigned to them, or you could easily view all customers. Statuses, for instance, are leads, opportunities, or maybe you have some lost business that you sought out, but it didn't work out. Tags, for instance, might be something like, hey, I have a loyal customer. They've been with us for years. We want to make sure we treat them right. Or maybe we have some of the opposite of that. Or maybe they have a dog or they have a gate code or something like that. Something to denote something unique about that customer to help you better service them. Customers will be added to every single record. So a customer might have multiple contacts because you can work with several different people for the scope of work. And maybe each of them have different addresses. 
So for each customer, and we'll go into greater detail on this in a moment, they'll have an address, you could save their card on file, they can have a lead source. Was it from a referral? Was it from Facebook? Was it from a Google ad? You can specify all of this for reporting purposes within Field Pulse. Next, let's talk about the sales tab. Think of the sales tab as really the lifeline of every record in Field Pulse. So we mentioned that customers are associated with every type of record, but anything in the sales tab is really related to money and transactions to do with those customers. This includes estimates, invoices, payments, purchase orders, and more. So estimates and invoices, I'll show you these briefly and we'll go into greater detail in a moment, but estimates are sent to your customer. They might also be called a bid or a quote. You'd send these to your customers and they either reject them or they accept them. When they've been accepted, you know that they wanna do business with you, this is great. And then you go ahead and create that as an invoice. Eventually you'll collect payment on that invoice. You can easily view estimates by status, overdue estimates because you can assign an expiration date, or maybe you want to see all the ones that have recently been accepted. Invoices are really similar to estimates. They don't have to be, but they're most frequently converted from an estimate. We also have this payments tab. This can be fun to scroll through. You can see all the money going into your account, either through cash, check, or if you're using Field Pulse credit card payments. We also have purchase orders, price books. So these kind of go hand in hand. Typically you add items to estimates and invoices from a price book. And then the output of that would be to create a purchase order that you send over to a vendor or a supplier. We also have proposals, which are a version of the price book. Let me walk through variant proposals real quick. So you might be proposing to a customer one option, two options, three, four, however many you'd like. Maybe you call it good, better, best. In this example, I have a price book where I have all these different options, but I want a nice clean way to present it to my customer. I can click on view proposal and maybe this is something you do while you're actually right there in person on your iPad or on your phone with the customer. And from here, the customer can look through all the benefits of each of the options themselves and select the one that they think best fits their needs. We also have what's called a dynamic proposal. This is really similar to the variant proposal, but it looks more like a traditional PowerPoint presentation. That's really good for a large scope of work where maybe they're spending a lot of money. And last, we have the item list. We won't go into too much detail on this, but the item list is your inventory and every single item that you have within Field Pulse to make it easier to add to all of your estimates and invoices. So items have prices, descriptions, pictures, SKU numbers, model numbers, barcodes, things like that. Next, let's talk about timesheets. There are two types of timesheets within Field Pulse. General timesheet tracking, you can see I'm clocked in here and I've been clocked in for 15 total hours. And then we have over here job timesheets. Think of general as you get to work at eight, you leave at five, so you get paid for the whole day. Whereas a job specific timesheet is more so, I arrived on site to do work at this job and I'm only gonna get paid while I'm there. This really helps you track each of your employees time spent on a job, which helps you figure out the correct profit margin for every single body of work. Now let's go into more detail about what it looks like to create a job, estimate an invoice and send that and collect payment from your customer. We'll do this by going to the work tab clicking on jobs. And for this example, I'll go ahead and create a new job. You can create a recurring job or a brand new job. I'll create a one-off job for this example. And you'll notice this import template button at the top. Templates are a great way to standardize processes within Field Pulse. For instance, if I'm doing maintenance visits several times a week or maybe multiple times a day, I would really like a way to not have to fill in the exact same information about that type of job every single time. So this pre-fills a bunch of information for you to prevent the number of clicks you have to do in the app. So if I scroll down, you can see that I already filled out a bunch of the information that's pertinent to completing the job. For this example, I'll just go ahead and specify a date and time for the job. I'm gonna mark it for today. And let's say it starts at 3 p.m. I'll save that information. We can even set a customer arrival window to let them know when they think we'll be arriving. The next important thing is I'm going to assign this to a team member. You can assign it to a whole group of team members, individuals, one person, two people, whatever you'd like to do. In this instance, I'm going to assign it to Ray. Click done and I'm gonna save it and now I'll have my job. And right here, you'll see automatically the app popped up any scheduling conflicts with Ray's calendar. So it's telling me here, hey, Ray already has all these jobs that conflict with that one. Maybe you should choose someone else. For this example, I'll go ahead and ignore that. Oh, and I almost forgot. I mentioned earlier that you can assign every record to a customer. So this job, I need to know who I'm servicing. So I could create a new customer or an existing one. I'll go ahead and do this vineyard here. That's an existing customer I'm working with. Now I'm good to go and I can click save. 
Once you save a job, you can then create an estimate, an invoice, and collect payment from that customer. And you can see here, as I saved that job, it actually prompted me to send an appointment confirmation email to the customer. I won't do that for this example, but that's a great way to automate notifications to your customers so your team doesn't have to remember to write out an email saying, hey, our appointment has been confirmed or I'm on the way. Directly from the job, I'll click actions, and then I can go ahead and create an estimate. Again, think of estimate as a quote. I'm doing a remodel. I want to talk to them about the scope of work and then create a material list or an estimate, share that back with my office, maybe send it off to the customer. So you'll see all this information is pre-filled based on the job location and that date. Similar to jobs though, I can import templates for estimates. So like I mentioned earlier with the water heater, maybe you use the same three or four parts every time and you don't want to have to type it in. So in this instance, I'll go ahead and just select this first estimate template. And the type of information that that pre-fills are all the different options. You're not just saying, hey, there's three products on this that I want to charge the customer for. I actually think that there's three different routes we could go and I want to give them three different options. But what's great about this is I didn't have to fill in any of this information. I imported that template and it pre-populated all the information and I'll actually let the customer choose which of these options they want for their estimate. You can see here the full breakdown of what's included for each of those options, everything I need to complete the job and the prices. As the owner of a business, you can even choose to hide these prices from your colleagues. So if you have someone going out and giving a quote, you don't necessarily want them to know how much something costs. They can still add the items, but you can choose to hide the prices from them. We can also offer add-on options. Maybe when you're there on the job, you notice that they need some type of improvement that they didn't initially ask for. You don't have to do it, but it could be a way to help increase business for your team. If I want to add an additional line item to an estimate, maybe that's not within the scope of the template that I added, you can add items from the item list I was talking about earlier. I could click the scan button right here, which will immediately allow me to scan a barcode if I'm with a physical product in my truck, and that would pull it out of my item list and inventory. In this instance, I'll just choose a random item, lodging and accommodations, and I can go ahead and choose whether or not I want the customer to see this, because maybe I add a labor item, and then I'll add the item to my estimate and invoice, and you can see added right here. At the bottom, you'll see the subtotal, I can even add either a discount or maybe a surcharge. So a discount that could be it's a loyal customer, 10% off. Surcharge would be, hey, I pay X percent in credit card fees, so I'm going to pass those on to the customers right here. Maybe I want to add a 5% fee, and I can change and customize the name if I wish. And now it populates here. I'll go ahead and click Save at the top. Now that we've saved our estimate, let's send it off to the customer. If we scroll down here, I can click View Estimate and it'll show you how it looks exactly to the customer. You could send it as an email, a text message, choose whether or not you want to click payment on it. Here you can see the general information. When I click send, I'll have a few different options. I can text it, email it, choose if I want to click payment on the spot. So if I'm in the house of the customer or they're with me, I can have them sign right then. They could swipe their credit card. I can enter in their bank information, however we want to collect their information. So here, I want to include payment request, and I can even select a down payment, so maybe a 20% deposit. In this example, I'll do 100% of the payment, and I'll go ahead and click send. And now that customer will get an email or a text message, whichever you select, and they'll be able to pay right there and then on the spot. In terms of the payment, this is what they'll receive. We call it the dynamic estimate, or if you want to go with a traditional PDF, that's available as an option as well. Either way, they can see the breakdown of everything that you added, in this instance, the PDF is quite long because I'm sending them an estimated proposal of all the work, and I had all those different options as well as add-on options. One of the benefits, though, of the dynamic estimate is not only can you see the breakdown of the payment, you can sign and accept right there in person. After I click Sign and Accept, I can type or draw a signature. I can add it, enter in my name, and submit. And then depending on the payment options we have configured in our account, we can then actually collect the payment. If you want to send them a confirmation, most of it is automated. However, right here, we give you the option to send a signed version of the estimate for their records. And just so you know that your team sent them a final estimate. If you want, you can also convert estimates into invoices. While you can collect a down payment, such as 20% on an estimate, you might want to collect the whole payment on a single invoice. If you want to do that, you can click convert to invoice right here. And it follows an extremely similar process where you send payment or collect it right there and then on the spot with their signature. Now, if we go back to our schedule view, you can see the job I created and assigned to Ray. I can click in on it, and this is everything we just entered. 
If I go to the estimate tab here, you can see that I had sent and had an accepted estimate for a total of $1,512 and that I've received that payment. So we've shown you how to use the Field Pulse app in your day-to-day -day operations, all the way from creating a customer to collecting payment on a job, estimate, and invoice. If you have any other questions, give us a call, check out our website, or check out our socials.